All right. Let me ask you something before you call her. Is this the same mother who came in here previously and she was allowing him to have females in his room and said that the, uh, you know, the great thing about him was that he kept his room clean. Is this the same mother? Oh, no, I think it is. But bring her on up. And there's no way he's going to be living with you because obviously you are an enabler. You're not a good influence in your life. And I knew when I uh, placed him on probation previously that he should not be living with you. But Today in Judge Boyd's courtroom, we have a case featuring a 19-year-old defendant who stands before Judge Boyd, facing the grim reality of six years in prison due to probation violations. But what makes this case interesting is the presence of a key witness who takes the podium, the defendant's mother, who also found herself at the receiving end of Judge Boyd's wrath. This is the first time we've seen Judge Boyd hold a defendant's mother's feet to the fire, but she wastes no time directing her attention squarely at the woman. Judge Boyd wasn't pulling any punches today, and she calls out the mother for being an enabler and constantly making excuses for the defendant. She let this woman know straight up that she was trying too hard to be the young man's friend instead of his parent. But this guy's mom isn't on trial here, so the real question of the day is, will Judge Boyd end up sending this young man to prison for six years? Stay tuned to find out. All right. And for Mr. Taylor? William Davidson. All right. And are you Mr. Alonzo Taylor? Yes, ma'am. Going to show you what's entitled motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision and first amendment motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Are you the same Alonzo Miguel Taylor who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2022 CR 6828 for the offense of felon in possession of a firearm on May 10th, 2023 for a period of five years? Is that you? Yes, ma'am. All right, state. Violated condition number one, on or about the ninth day of February 2022 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Alonzo Miguel Taylor, committed the offense of evading arrest or detention in violation of condition number one. How do you plead to that? True or not true? And your honor, we waive the other violations alleged in the motions. Any objections? No objection, your honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number one, the court could find it true, grant the motion? find you guilty and sentence you up to 10 years in the prison and up to $10,000 fine. Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number one? Yes, ma'am. Court will find violation of condition number one true. Is there a proposed agreement? Uh, there's not, Your Honor. We're going open on this, but uh, we have agreed that the defendant will go plead to the evading that he just pled tread true to in county court number five. And the state has agreed to TIC uh, the resisting from February 9th, 2024, and the evading uh, from November 15th, 2023. Uh, we are, the state is asking that the defendant be revoked and sentenced to six years in the prison, and I believe the defense would like to be heard on that. Yes, defense, what are you requesting? Your Honor, um, his mother, Ms. Tejeda, is here. Can I call her as a witness? She sure. Okay, thank you. All right. Let me ask you something before you call her. Is this the same mother who came in here previously and she was allowing him to have females in his room and said that the, uh, you know, the great thing about him was that he kept his room clean. Is this the same mother? Oh, no, I think it is. But bring her on up. She says you, you know who she is. Oh, yes, I do. She I remember this case. His hair was a different color at that time. You have a good memory. I try. Ma'am, put your phone away. I actually wanted to show her something. So. Right, can you raise your right hand? Yeah. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record. My name is Tracy. My last name is Tahada. All right, what do you wish to tell me? Um. So this has been a long time. I didn't expect for everybody to be here, but. I know plenty of parents come here or they, they don't. Um, my son, I, I've been going through this for a very long time. And I wanted to show you something where I lost my son and how old he was because of the system. No, 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 no. no. Let, me, let me stop you right there. It's not because of the system. I remember you coming into this court testifying 
making excuses for him when he was not doing what he was supposed to do, making excuses for him for why he's testing positive for drugs, making excuses for him for why he doesn't have a job, making excuses for him for why you were letting him at, be at your house and using your house as a hotel motel. You came in and made excuses for him with that. And I remember sp specifically telling him that he had better start getting his life together because you were not being of help to him, that you were enabling him. And now you're back before me again, making excuses for his actions. So his being in the system, what does that have to do with him evading? So I'm not making excuses for... For Alonzo, what I'm saying, let's say if you had been shot in your knee at 15 or you were accused of something that you didn't do at 13, you end up going into the system, you end up finding friends in the system that you can start believing that they're your friends. He got his fingers broken, not to mention, I can name uh, several other things that Alonzo's been through mentally that has been very challenging for him since he's been a child, okay? So I don't make excuses, but I do understand when people go through things in their lives that mentally damages them. So there's a lot of that you guys don't know about Alonzo, what he's seen and what he's experienced. And well, let me tell no, no, no. Let me tell you this. Here's an excuse that you're making and you made it before. Since you're bringing me into the equation, let me bring myself into the equation as you've done. My mother divorced. When I was young, my brother was young. And guess what? She had rules and we had to follow those rules. There is no way on this planet that my mom ever allowed us to have people in our bedrooms with doors closed, knowing that we are having sex in bedrooms with the doors closed and saying, we're going to take care of it. You have done a disservice to him because you've been making excuses. Everybody, I can tell you, everybody in this court has had something traumatic happen to them. Believe it or not, I've had traumatic things happen to me. People think that I just came on this bench and everything was fine and I had this perfect Pollyanna life. That's not my life. But you know what? At a certain point in time, no matter what has happened to you in your past, at some point, the choices you're making are the choices you are making. Do you understand? Oh, yes, I definitely understand. And I explained that to Alondra, too. And so that's why I explained to him, like, outpatient, mental health. Oh, no, and he's, and let me just tell you, let me stop you right there. If I continue him on probation, there is no way he's doing any type of outpatient. And there's no way he's going to be living with you because obviously you are an enabler. You're not a good influence in your life. And I knew when I uh, placed him on probation previously that he should not be living with you, but he had no other choice but to stay with you. I knew that. So I'll own that. He was 19. Yeah. And you're enabling him. But 19 years old. No, you cannot. I'm not. I understand what you're stating, but I've come a long ways with Alonzo, and he's come a long way. He's changed a lot. No, he hasn't. He has. Yes, he has. All right. I'm going to have you step back. I Thank understand. you. Can you come forward? Can I talk? No, you may not. I'm going to give you a choice. Can I please talk? No. I'm going to give you a choice. Here are your choices. You have two choices. One, I can continue on your probation. You will no longer be living with, at your mom's house because she's an enabler. She was an enabler when she came here. And she was an enabler last time for you when you had a different hair, hair color. She was an enabler when you kept testing positive for drugs. So one or two things. One, I can continue you. Or I can send you to seven, sentence you to seven years in prison. Which do you prefer? Mm -hmm. All right. So you're not going to be allowed to live with your mom anymore. I'm going to deny the motion. And the only reason why, well, one of the many reasons why I'm continuing you is because of your age. You're young. I still think you can be saved. I could send you to prison and you know what would happen at the prison? Can you say one thing? No. <laughs> You know what would end up happening at prison? Isolated like all of them. Oh no, you wouldn't be isolated. You'd be in general population and people would look at be looking at you some kind of way. Prison is not a nice place to be. Prison is not a place where people go and everybody just leave them alone and there's everybody's being nice to each other. I'm going to deny the motion. I'm going to alter the main conditions.
And uh, that's going to include, he's either uh, probation, he's either going to felony drug court, or he's going to state ISF. And is cognitive local or not? State ISF is not local at all, Judge. All right. So their ISF, the local ISF, is here in San Diego. All right. He's going to do state ISF. And he's not allowed to reside with his mom. It's time for you to grow up. Can I do felony drug court? Hmm? Can I do felony drug court? If felony drug court accepts you, and you had better talk to them and let them know that you want to be in felony drug court, you understand? No. You had better start making better choices with your life. Now, do you still want to talk to me? No. All right, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth so help you, God? Yes, ma'am. What do you want to say? I just want to say my mom's my best friend. She's my only best, only friend. Mm -hmm. Most of my life, she's right. I've been isolated <laughs> from the worst. Basically. I'm not really good at talking to people. I never mm -hmm. was. Today, I might miss up my speech a little bit. Yeah. I understand. I made mistakes in my life. A lot of mistakes. Can't really take them back. Let me just tell you what the problem is. And we're off the record. This is the problem. The problem is parents, they're really not supposed to be your best friend. I don't understand this new age parenting that people have. Parents are supposed to be parents. I ain't broke with anybody. No, that's what I'm saying. Guess what? You know who was in my life? My mom. But my mom let me know that she's my mom. We're not girlfriends, right? I know I can go to her. I know I can tell her anything and I would tell her anything, but there is no way on this earth that I will be calling her by her first name because she was my mother and we were not best friends. We were not girlfriends. I knew that she was in charge and that's how it was ran. And I'm only telling you this since your mom wanted to bring me in the equation. Your problem is your mom, with her letting you treat her house like a hotel motel, guess what? That's because y'all are best friends. She's not behaving as a mother. And you are going to have to grow up. And that's why you're not allowed to reside with her because she's enabling you and she's making excuses. At some point, the choices you make in your life, guess what? Those are your own choices. Because otherwise, everybody in here has some trauma and they can go out, continue to break the law and they can just come in and say, oh, I only have a single parent. Oh, I got shot. Oh, they kicked me out of school. Oh, I never had anybody to be there for me. Oh, I only have one friend. There are so many excuses that people can have for not doing the right thing. That's going to stop with you today. You understand? No, we're done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All comments, viewpoints, interpretations, and insights expressed in this video are for education and entertainment purposes. All individuals featured in the video are to be presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Please do not attempt to contact, locate, or engage with any individuals featured in the video.